Hello, and welcome to Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we are talking about the use of flowcharts in patent applications. Not all patent applications need flowcharts, but patent applications that include methods or processes will usually have one or more flowcharts to show the process in the patent figures. So here we see a basic flowchart. Let's cover the very basics. We have endpoints, such as start and end, these endpoints show the beginning and end of a process. They are not necessarily required, and in many cases, flowcharts in patent applications don't include these. The flowchart will contain some process blocks, usually shown as rectangles. This is where something happens. And some flowcharts may contain decision blocks. These are typically shown with a diamond, or sometimes I've seen a flattened hexagon used for this purpose. The decision block is typically where we check some condition, and depending on if that condition is true or false, we do some other processing. So here is what a patent flowchart might look like. It's black and white, just like other types of patent drawings. Each box is numbered, and typically the entire flowchart is numbered. As you can see here, the entire flowchart is numbered as 600, just to the upper left of the flowchart. And each box is also numbered. Typically, the arrows are not given a number. In the case of a large flowchart, it is possible to split the flowchart into multiple sheets. This is done by using a sheet connector. So here, we split the large flowchart into two pieces. And here is the first piece. And at the bottom, we add a sheet connector, which is typically a circle with a letter on it. And on the next page, we have another sheet connector with the same letter on it. And in the written description, it can be explained that the flowchart continues to the next sheet using that sheet connector. While this example shows splitting a flowchart into two sheets, a very large flowchart can be split into several sheets with multiple sheet connectors. I personally try to avoid having to use very large flowcharts, but sometimes a large flowchart is the best way to describe a process. Flowcharts are often used to correlate to a method claim. Where possible, claimed elements should be shown in a drawing, and a flowchart is an effective way to show steps of a process or method. Let's make up a quick example to illustrate. Note this is not a real patent claim or a real invention, just for example. Okay, so let's go. We have a method for controlling traffic on a highway comprising monitoring a vehicle rate based on toll transponder activity. And then we do determining if a vehicle rate exceeds a predetermined threshold. And finally, in response to determining the vehicle rate exceeds a predetermined threshold, activating a traffic control gate. So this is like an invention to control the flow of traffic on a highway by activating a traffic control gate to meter traffic if too many vehicles are passing through. Okay, so we have a few things here that would map well to a flow chart. Let's take a look. We have this process, we make this decision, and then we do this depending on what the decision outcome is. So let's make a quick flow chart. Here is our first process. Now, our decision box. We check if the vehicle rate exceeds our predetermined threshold. What is our predetermined threshold? That doesn't matter. It could be, let's say, 50 cars per minute. It doesn't matter for the purposes of the flowchart. The details of what the specific threshold is can be explained in the written description part of the patent application. And if that rate is too high, we activate the traffic control gate to try to slow down the rate of traffic a bit. So we need to show a yes over this line to indicate the condition that causes us to activate the traffic control gate. Now we also need to show what happens if the answer is no. And maybe we don't do much but keep on monitoring so we can link back to the beginning of the flowchart or do whatever other processes we are supposed to do if the result is no. For the purpose of this example, I will just have it go back to the beginning. Then we number the figure. In this example, let's say it's figure 5. And then we will add a number for the flowchart. We'll call that 500. And then we'll label the rest of the boxes. And finally, we have our flowchart. So let's summarize. 
Flowcharts are useful to document a process or method. It is a common practice to use them to track method claims. Why? Because elements and claims, where possible, need to be shown in drawings. For methods and processes, flowcharts are a good way to do that. And you can add language about order and concurrency. So depending on the situation, some processes may be performed in an order different than what is shown in the flowchart. Or sometimes, some of the steps could be performed concurrently instead of sequentially. If you have more than a few blocks in your flowchart, the number of possible permutations quickly gets to be too large to illustrate every possibility. So sometimes, depending on the nature of the patent application, I'll include a statement that one or more of the processes shown in the flowchart can be performed in a different order or may be performed concurrently just to try not to limit the invention to the specific sequence shown in the flowchart. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.